Welcome back to the Underground Broadcast. Happy Friday, everybody. Cheers. Way ahead of you, Joe Coop. I had those beers on lockdown about 20 minutes ago. I said it's not happening to me this time around. No, 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 not this time. Happy Friday, everybody. Hope everyone's having a good day. Uh, let me hit it for y'all who are here. I think Doug on Funny got here. Uh, Doug, I think you said uh, you're working on something uh, and you'll have us in the background. I appreciate you being here and at least listening. Uh, cheers to you, buddy. Here we go. Woke as fuck. Cheers to you, Doug. Uh, and then Super Saiyan Joku is here. Let me hit it for this guy. Here you go. I want to have the world. The world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft. Ah! Sad, tragic news today. I'm representing. We'll talk about that tonight when we get to the comic book stuff. I know I usually put that in the pop culture, but I'm I'm going to put that in the comic book stuff. I feel it belongs over there, Goku. Joku. So we'll talk about it then. Uh, yeah, it's a, a, a big surprise to me. I wasn't expecting it this week, two days ago. But we'll talk about it later. Um, well... This is a dud channel. We usually don't even have that many people watching us, to be honest with you. Uh, so, you know, but now we really don't have anybody watching us. Uh, but it's all right. Tomorrow, I'll upload the pod broadcast like I usually do. And, uh, and, and the channel's still there. But, you know, for those of you who don't know, I'll let you all know. Uh, Fucking last Sunday, we were watching AEW uh, Revolution, the pay-per-view. And I was uh, broadcasting it and showing it. And then slowly, we got a lot of views, man. That's the most we've ever had on any live. But of course, if we were doing a broad broadcast with our show, we were uh, fucking off. And uh, we had like 40 people watching, which was awesome. And uh, we were getting away with it. And then uh, people were asking to make it bigger and, and you know, and slowly I started to. And uh, and and then we got we got caught. I tried to start the stream again and we got caught again. And unfortunately, that did give me. A copyright strike. So the channel <laughs> has the first copyright strike and. Uh, it expires in fucking three months. Uh, suck ass. So I can't live stream from the main channel. Which is why we're live streaming on this channel. And no one's watching us now. Uh, no one even watched us before. But no, one, no one's really watching us now. Because no one knows about this dud channel. So. For the next three months. I'll be broadcasting live. From this dud channel. But the main channel is still the other one, and the videos and everything will be posted again, like it always does, Saturday. It'll be posted, edited, Sunday, uh, the review videos, and then the, the short videos during the week, and shit. Uh, it's not much I can do. Uh, Gomer Kyle reached out to me uh, earlier and was talking about that. Uh, fucked all these people that were complaining and... They're the reason we got shut down because I started making it bigger and, and started, you know, so that they could see better. And uh, he does kind of have a point. I should have just left it small the way I originally had it. And uh, we probably would have been able to. We were already. I think there was only two matches left. Two or three matches left. And it was going to be over anyways. So we watched a lot of it. A lot of it. Um. 
So, I don't know. Gomer, I, I gave Gomer and I, I told him maybe uh, what I might do. I, I, don't, I don't know yet. I might make another dud channel. A, a new, completely new dud channel. And um, we might be doing trying to uh, do that stream again. And we can watch WrestleMania. Uh, Tyson versus Logan Paul or whatever. <laughs> we'll try it again. I don't care if I get banned from another uh fucking channel but we watched the whole thing we got away with it until the final two matches and it was my fault because i like i said i wanted everybody to see what i was seeing man i said everybody i was giving people the links people said the links wasn't working uh but i you know me i just want everybody to to enjoy themselves and i just wanted you know that's what ended up causing us to get banned is that i started fucking letting people uh, listening to people and i made the thing bigger and we got banned we got copyright strike uh, I don't know. I'm deciding. WrestleMania is still like a month away. Uh, we'll see what I end up doing there. Uh, but for sure, uh, we're not. It's gonna be a while before we get to live stream from the from the original channel. Just to let you all know, uh, I'm getting over notifications here about bullshit. Let me just fuck that. Anyways, uh, cheers to y'all. Happy Friday. We'll see how it goes. Uh, if we're gonna keep doing the streaming or not and shit. Hmm. All right, well, let's get started with the motherfucking comments. How we always do start off the show, we, we read comments. Uh, whatever you send me on the Instagram, uh, at, at the Underground Broadcast, or Twitter, TikTok, or at Son of Man 665 on, tw on Twitter, I will post it here. Uh, just like Super Saiyan Joku, who sent me today on IG. He says, uh, how high can I get taking all this at once? We'll see at the underground broadcast where I can enjoy some nerd news. Speaking of nerd news, rest in peace, Ak Akira Toriyama. Cheers, most flowers. Hashtag. Live. Hashtag Dragon Ball Z. Hashtag TH hashtag THC. Hashtag 400 milligrams. Hashtag hot cocoa bomb. Hashtag Mary Jane, hashtag marijuana, hashtag edibles, and hashtag smoke weed every day. Aw, uh, yeah. Um, he's got some 400 milligram THC gummies. Now, is that 400 milligrams per gummy or 400 milligrams because there's four of them in there with each one being 100 milligrams? That's my question. And then he's got some hot cocoa bombs. Uh, I guess it's like a chocolate. I saw, I saw it, and it's 100 milligrams. Uh, and then he's chilling with his friend, drinking what looks like margaritas at some kind of Mexican restaurant or a Korean restaurant. I don't know. It could be either or. Uh, cheers, Joku. Let me know if those gummies are 400 milligrams per gummy or a combination of all of them. Oh, the whole bag is 400 milligrams. Yeah, that makes more sense. Imagine one gummy, 400 milligrams. Holy shit, that'll fuck you up. You'll be comatose and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to get one of my, one of my little fucking things here. Uh. Cheers! Super Saiyan Joku, you're the shit. Thank you for sending me that. Your friend there. Looks like a badass. Y'all are drinking margaritas and shit. Uh, during lunch, and then going back to work all drunk. Motherfuckers. Ah, <laughs> cheers! <sighs> Our first comment uh, of the night or of the week was uh, Doug Unfunny. And he put, uh, cheers, son. Good show. Keep it up. Just uh, on general on the podcast and shit. Cheers, uh, Doug. Thank you for being out there uh, listening and shit. Uh, appreciate you, motherfucker. Let's see. He also commented on the uh, Avatar. Uh, the last Airbender video that I did review. He said, uh, I saw the series with my boy when I was seven years old. Oh, that's badass. Oh, when he was seven years old, not when I when he said when he was seven years old. He too, like I, was very excited about this live action adaptation. Uh we watched a few episodes this past Sunday together, and so far we're loving it. I don't see why people are complaining about it. It's just like you said, it's better than M. Night Shamalama Ding Dong's adaptation. Cheers to the man. 
Hashtag live. You know the what I've noticed is the people that are complaining is for it's the young generation. It's like it's like the kids that that probably didn't even watch the original series or weren't even like they were in diapers when the original series came out. So you know they didn't really watch it, and they probably didn't even watch M Night Shyamalan and shit. And so they're the ones that are complaining because oh they went and saw they barely saw the anime like last month or something, and now they see this and they're all like oh this is not the same and eh, eh. and it's like my fuck you you have any idea how long we've been waiting for something this good a long fucking time you idiots uh I don't know man I just get pissed off like yeah of course it's not the same of course it's not that silly. Uh, of course, these actors are not Oscar Academy Award winning actors. They're goddamn kids. It's probably the first acting job they've ever had. It takes experience for them to get better. Calm down. Fucking dicks. That's all I'm saying. This is a good fucking series, man. I don't know why people are bitching. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. But this is like probably the best live action adaptation of Last Airbender we've gotten and we're probably ever going to get. So I don't know if people need to shut the fuck up and enjoy it. You know? Take your finger out of your ass, put it in your mouth, shut the fuck up, and watch the damn show on TV. Idiots. Cheers! Don't I'm funny. I remember I found Avatar by mistake. Um, I found it when Sozin's Comet was gonna come out. When Sozin's Comet was the movie was gonna come out on Nickelodeon, they were showing commercials. Non stop about Solson's Comet, Solson's Comet, Solson's Comet. And then I, I, I don't even, I think I even saw a commercial. It wasn't even on, on Nickelodeon, but I saw a commercial for Solson's Comet, the movie premiering this Saturday from four to five. It's a special. It's crazy. It's shit, two hour special. I don't know what the fuck was going on. So, what is this Solson's Comet? This cartoon? I thought it was called Solson's Comet, the cartoon. What is this? It's Avatar. Oh, what the fuck is Avatar? So I went on one of those things, you know, because I, I don't pay for ass. Uh, so I went on one of those things online, those websites where you can watch shit for free. And I started from the beginning. Well, let me see this shit because I guess Sosin's Comics, the ending. Well, let me see from the beginning. I binge watched that shit. All of it before Sosin's Comic came out. Uh, yeah, because I was excited. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, I downloaded all of them. And ever since then, I've always had them. I've always had them downloaded. Uh, in my hard drive. Uh, that's how I got into it. But I didn't know what the fuck it was. There was too many cartoons that used to come out. Because I'm an old school Nick kid. You know what I'm saying? Like Doug. Uh, Rugrats. Ah, Real Monsters. Uh, uh, what else? I'm trying to think of what else there was back then. There wasn't too many. There started more coming out. And that's when it started turning into ass. I'll even say that even... The fairly odd parents. I I mean I wasn't it wasn't my generation. I was a little older already. But I thought that was funny when it came out. Uh and shit. But I didn't get into the wild Jordan berries or some shit and all that other stuff. I didn't I didn't get into it. So So this also came out at a time where I was already fucking old. And uh, it was the advertisements that got me. Because I was curious, what the fuck are they talking about? And I got hooked, man. It's good. It's a good fucking, well, well, really well written fucking uh, cartoon. <laughs> People don't like to call it anime. So it's a really well written cartoon. Cheers, Doug. And I guess really nobody, nobody knew about this link and shit. It's all right. I sent it to Gomer and Indy. We'll see if they show up tonight. I sent it to the cunt. I sent it to the cunt, but you know, it's in Australia. He might have gotten it late or something. <laughs> nah. Anyways, cheers, Doug. Let's see who else gave a comment tonight. Oh, speaking of the devil, the fucking cunt. Let me hit it for this guy. You can feel it while smoking. You can feel it while drinking. You can feel it getting woke as fuck. So get your slot ready, because the cunt is here. The cunt on the avatar says, The firebrenders are straight CCP red commies from Ch China. How are the firebrenders white? I thought it was badass. 
shits all he's talking about the 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 show i thought it was badass it shits all over everything marvel's been putting out Sokka might be the straightest pussy getting mall fucking <laughs> getting mall fucking weave gotten in a while i thought for sure, they try to woke it up and make Aang autistic, non-binary lesbian. Nah, this fucking guy. Um, yeah, um, you know what? I didn't even think about that. That they are straight up Chinese <laughs> communists. <laughs> Look, the reason why I keep saying they're Caucasian is because in the actual anime, or not, the cartoon, I keep saying anime, I keep saying anime. There's a distinct, uh, like when they, cause you know, there's, there's different races, you know, like, I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell. And when, when people draw anime, the races and shit, uh, of which ones are Asians and which ones are not, because they all kind of have these fucking eyes, you know, but I just figured because of the skin tone and complexion and not only that, but you know, I think the, the fire Lord. And 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 Azul, like like the royal family, more than anything, they looked more American in the way that the people were drawing them than the rest of the Fire Nation, is what I mean. Uh, it's just the way I saw it. Um, but now that you tell me that they're straight up commies, and then the colors, you're right, the colors were always there, red and yellow. I never fucking noticed that. The colors were always there, red and yellow. So yeah, maybe there was. And you know what? For this show, they did primarily choose Chinese actors, I think. Uh for the firebenders. I don't know about Dan uh what's his name? Dan uh I want to say Dan Lin. I don't even remember the Fire Lord, that guy. I don't know if he's Chinese, but I know that uh Zuko is for sure. Uh that kid is uh fucking Chinese. So, I don't know. I don't know, man. We just uh, we made it into a really racist, you know. But oh well, what are you gonna do? You know, I'll tell you one thing. There was very, very few blacks in the Avatar: the Last Airbender cartoon. Very few. I just put it like that. That was some bullshit. I don't think there was any Mexicans neither. I didn't see nobody climbing walls or crossing the borders and shit. The same. That's pretty racist of them to not include those demographics. Mm -mm -mm. Anyways. Cheers, cunt. Cheers, motherfucker. Mm. Just hitting this J here for you. All right. Uh, no, ma'am. This fucking misogynist. Let me hit it for him. No, ma'am. National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood. No, ma'am. Also on the Avatar video, he says, I mean, I remember the Fire Nation having pale skin tones. I get why you might think they were Caucasian. Actually, now that I'm looking at some of the drawings online, maybe they are. I just feel they're... They drew them differently than they did the other characters. You know? Like, for sure. I mean, the waterbenders from the north and the fucking south were Eskimos. I mean, there's no denying that. Um, But I, I just always... That's just me. My mind went there when I was when I was younger. Uh, that's actually one hell of a question, he says, to ask the creators if you ever get a chance. I, I would, if I ever met them, I'd be like, right, yeah, I would, that would be the first thing I would ask them. He says, me and my roommate binge, binge watch this today. I thought it was cool. It's obviously not the same, but it could have been much worse, like M. Night's version. Cheers, son. Hashtag. Live. Look. If you hate on this fucking show, all you guys, all, like, all I gotta tell you to do is go watch M. Night Shyamalan's fucking movie. It's not even that long. It's about as long as one episode of these fucking things. I think it's like an hour and, and ten minutes or something. It's fucking short. So go watch that fucking movie and see the mess he did because he crunched 20 episodes into an hour and ten minutes or whatever. Whereas they crushed 20 episodes into eight one-hour episodes. I mean, they did a good job. Fuck you. Oh, I'm still mad that people are hating on this. Um, No Man actually got a reply from some guy named WV5853. Weave or some shit. 
Anyways, this guy says, I, I guess not since the Earth Kingdom is based around Chinese cultures and the Fire Nation is based around Japanese. So the Asian thing makes sense to me. Could be either way, though. Uh, the, the, the Earth Kingdom does resemble more Chinese culture. You're right. The Japanese, man, I mean, you're right. They they want to be attacking and invading. You're right. I think this guy has more of a point about, like, they're not, they're Japanese, not commies. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They made him Chinese in this one. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know, man. I mean, this is what happens when you live in reality, because in reality, in our reality, Motherfuckers have made countries and everybody's like uh, Israeli or American or Mexican and shit and a half. And, uh, and in their world, they're just fire, earth and shit. So it's still racism, regardless of how we're painting it. It's still racism. That's all I'm going to say. So cheers, WV. Thank you for commenting and shit. Oh, DJ New Kid. I'm going to hit the fucking DJ horde for this guy, man. It's been a while since I've seen this guy. But he commented on the Thunderbolt's name change, and he said, a hundred. Keeping it a hundred, he says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Just a little observation how stupid Marvel is and how easy they could make this. If the fucking guy... Thunderbolt Ross dies in the movie you're going to make before this. Then the easiest thing you could do is say, oh, we're naming the team after him. Because he thought of the project before he died. As a memory. But no, they're naming the Thunderbolts because Yelena's favorite soccer team when she was a little girl is Thunderbolts, apparently. Go figure. Fuck you. Cheers, DJ New Kid. Thanks for that. Hey, you know what, Joku? I'm going to throw you a wrench. I just realized that. Wait, I don't have any wrenches here tonight. Uh, there we go. There you go. I just threw you a freaking wrench, motherfucker. Cheers. Uh, it's a, uh, I, think it, I think I did. Uh, it's not coming out, but oh well. Uh, cheers. Let's see who else is coming out. Let's see who else made a comment here. Oh my god. The fucking. Oh, there you go. You got a wrench. Uh, the trumpets will sound left a big comment. This motherfucker. And thanks to AI, he's going to show up and actually read his comment out loud for us. This is going to be good. All right. I hope you guys are ready for this. Let's hear. Uh, the trumpets will sound uh, commenting on this broadcast. Hello, muchacho. I'm sorry I missed last week. I've been very busy. I traveled down south too. Eagle Pass, Texas, or as the locals like to call it, Illegal Pass. What a great bunch of people. Son of man, I am proud you were born from among them. I made my way to America's phallus, the state of Florida, for a brief court appearance. I was greeted with roaring applause and cheers from supporters. God bless you all. Glad the Supreme Court denied Sleepy Joe and his cronies from keeping me off the ballots. Shout out to Gomer Kyle and his political ways and Houston, Texas. This very own Joe Cool. Cheers to all the woke pack and cheers to the son of man. Hashtag woke pack for life. Cheers, trumpets and hashtag for life. That is creepy as fuck. That's all I'm gonna say, dude. Uh, I, the AI reads it really fast, uh, and it stumbles every once in a while, but. He kind of does the same thing. <laughs> Maybe he's a robot. <laughs> it sounds a lot like it. Maybe the real person is actually a robot too and shit. <laughs> oh man. He said he said he went down to Eagle Pass or as the locals call it, Illegal Pass. This fucking guy. <laughs> he says, I'm proud you were born from among them. Hey motherfucker. I'm not, I'm, I'm a little bit northern from, I was born more north from Eagle Pass. Uh, or actually, yeah, 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 it's more north. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, we're a bigger city where I'm from. Uh, but it's still right there, man. It's not that far. Eagle Pass is just fucking a few, maybe a hundred miles south from where I live. Uh, but I'm, st I, I grew up in a border city. I wasn't going to say a border town, but that place compared to Eagle Pass and Zapata and those other little places, those places are, are fucking towns. Whereas I grew up in a city. It's no Houston or Austin, but it's a fucking city. Um, yeah, this, uh, thank you fucking, uh, trumpets, you crazy asshole. Uh, <laughs> that was crazy that they, they, you're on the ballot, motherfucker. You're right. You're on the ballot. Uh, cheers to you. Uh, and good luck this November. Cheers. <laughs> Just good luck, muchacho. It sounds funny when he says, I'm, I'm going to play that real quick. Cause it sounds funny when he says, he says, hello, muchacho. Check it out. Hello, muchacho. I <laughs> Hello muchacho. Hello muchacho. I <laughs> Oh my god. <coughs> Man, AI is scary, y'all. AI is fucking scary. Um <coughs> next on the on the comments video. It's Eddie Molina Vilches. <laughs> he says, uh I like the new look, son. It's the Shih Tzu, son. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Because I said that. I hope we don't get sued because of the fucking background. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, he also left another comment. And he said, what up, my brown ski skin walker? Oh yeah, this guy's the one who came up with that Brownski. He called us. He called me and uh, he who should not be named. He called us fucking Brownskis. And Gomer Kyle has just shown up. I'm gonna hit your intro, Gomer, while I make you give you a wrench. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm gonna give you three seconds to wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. One. Two, three. Shazam. Cheers, Gomer. Welcome to the Dud channel. Uh, this is where we'll be streaming live. I might just change the name and put the live <laughs> streaming <laughs> there. <laughs> Anyways, earlier, uh, Gomer, I talked about uh, why we got banned and all that. Maybe, maybe on Sunday you can watch the beginning uh, or the comments video. Uh, because I talk about maybe making a another channel, another dud channel, so we can try it again and watch WrestleMania. Cause man, there was only two fucking matches left. We got away with it the whole night, and it wasn't until the end that I really started pushing the envelope. Cause, and I know people were people were complaining and they make it bigger and make it better, and and I did it for them, man. Cause I I, I want people to see what I I mean, you know, I start feeling bad, and I want you know me. I want people to fucking enjoy what I'm enjoying, you know, but obviously YouTube's not going to let that happen. So we might have to do it a little different next time. We'll see. We'll see. It's still, we're still weeks away from WrestleMania, uh, but I'll let you know that week, probably that Friday, because I think it's a two day thing, uh, but I'll start making a dud channel so we can uh, do these live uh, pay-per-views, uh, watch parties with y'all. Because it was fun, man. There was like 40 people. Nobody was talking. It was just me, you, Gomer, and, and Super Saiyan Joker who were, who were, who were chatting. Uh, but there was, uh, you know, people were watching, man. And that's cool. I think I got a few subscribers from it. They're probably going to unsubscribe once they realize that this isn't a wrestling channel. <laughs> but oh well. Cheers, Gomer. Thank you for being here. Cheers, Goku. Thank you for being here. And cheers uh, to Doug Unfunny. Because uh, I think he's there watching us in the background uh, or hearing us. So cheers to you, bros. Um, cheers to Vietjes. Thank you for commenting, you fucking guy. Brownski. Oh, a new guy on the Thunderbolts name change. Kenneth. Kenair. Ken Kenair. I don't know. He says... Thunderbolt Ross is Marvel. Suicide Squad is DC. Do you not know this? Yeah, I know this. And he's fucking six, five-year-old knows this from watching cartoons on Disney and shit. And on WB. This is a 
three minute video expert that I just cut and post during the week. I'm sorry that you don't watch our channel and you didn't watch. I'm trying not to shit on you because you're pissing me off. You know how you, these motherfuckers know how I get. I rape motherfuckers on this channel. All right, I do. All right, but I know you don't watch us, so you don't know that probably. Yeah, I don't remember because I was drinking and smoking weed. But probably I was saying some shit like uh, that. The Thunderbolts is Marvel's uh, equivalent to Suicide Squad because they need to copy each other to make sell comic books. And so Marvel says, let's just call it the Thunderbolts, where the government gets a bunch of bad guys in jail and sends them on a suicide mission. But it's not called Suicide Squad, it's called Thunderbolts. Because I'm drunk and high, I said, oh, Marvel's the Suicide Squad, or whatever the fuck. And that's the explanation, Kenneth. You fucking guy. But anyways, we still read your comment in this channel because we value everybody's opinion, even if it's an ignorant opinion because they don't watch us. Uh, but cheers to you, uh, fucking <laughs> Kenneth. Giving you the DJ horn. And I'm saying cheers to you. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for watching. All right, let's see who else. Oh, Gomer on the... Well, I just posted this today because I didn't realize <laughs> till this morning that I wasn't going to be able to stream from our chan from my channel. Uh, so, yeah. That's why I made this quick video explaining. And uh, luckily, at least two of three of you uh, uh, found out because everyone everyone else is probably... One, everyone else, nobody watches this <laughs> damn show. <laughs> Everyone else who the millions and millions of woke packers out there are wondering why the fuck the live streams not coming up and their notification bell didn't ring on their YouTube channel and shit. I'm sorry y'all we're at a dud channel doing the live stream but tomorrow it will be uploaded on Saturday's edited pussy version for all you motherfuckers how we usually do when we do what it is that we do. Thank you Gomer. Gomer said I went over there and I subbed. Yeah I'm probably gonna I don't know. I've, it's just a dud channel. That's a channel I created a long time ago, and I told he, who should not be named, that he should make these short videos and post them on this dud channel. So they could just randomly appear when people are searching for ass. And he said, that's a good idea. But he never did it. <laughs> so then I started doing it. Like I do everything else. So anyways, we are, I have a dud channel. This is where we're streaming from. Cheers, y'all. I love you. Oh shit, is this the last comment? Let me... Let me re re refresh this. Re 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 refresh. Yes, this is the last comment. It is none other than Super Saiyan Joku. And in honor of Akira Toriyama, which we will talk about when we get to the comic book nerd shit. But in honor of Toriyama's son, we will play your intro again, Super Saiyan Joku. I want to have the world the world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, Super Saiyan Joku says on the Fuck the Avatar haters I mean The music playing When Iroh's sons died Brought a tear to my eye That's the song that he played In that little I think he had like a little thing And he was playing it and shit In the, in the anime And he's crying when he played it in the, in the cartoon and shit and they played it in the background during that scene, uh, Super Saiyan Joku. And then he goes, uh, my cabbages guy was there. I went crazy seeing Jet and the crew, and I watched it eight more times, and I do see a good amount of comedy after all. It's Son of Man approved. Cheers, mother flowers. Hashtag. Live. Um, dude, I didn't even know this. But the fucking cabbage guy is the 
guy who actually did the voice for the cabbage guy like it's the actual fucking voice actor they got him to come play <laughs> the same character he voiced uh that's fucking badass man i didn't had no idea jet right away from the beginning i recognized him uh i remember when they were trying to sneak into omashu and this guy was gonna help them and i said is that jet and i'm like but jet story's not like this and i started thinking they're so cramming stuff together and i'm like that's gotta be jet that's gotta be jet and it took a long time if when they were finally inside of Mamashu, that's when he finally said my name is jet but i was like he wasn't saying his name but when he said his name i was like i knew it he looked like it i'm like he knew he looked like fucking jet for sure uh so that was badass and they all looked alike the the duke the the little the the duke and i forget what the other guy was called the duke and and uh the little guy or some shit like that uh those guys look exactly the same and shit um uh, it's got it's got some funny parts and it's mostly like so soka Sokka is saying some of the funny parts and every once in a while some a character will say something but it's it's the right amount man because it's like it's it's war people are people are dying and they show from the very first fucking uh, scene when the fire nation attacks the airbenders they show them burning people and you see burning corpses so this is real bro and they're not gonna be silly ang's not gonna be playing around if if knowing that everyone's dying like it makes sense there is sarcasm little lines in there you know because you know that's real life but it's not all the time, like in the anime, because Aang was just playing around all the fucking time in the anime. Cartoon. I keep having to say anime, but cartoon. I want to upset the nerds. It's a, not an anime. Um, yeah, Peep Squeak and the Duke. <laughs> they looked exactly the same. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, man, I love the I love the series. So f fuck the haters uh, for for hating on this. I thought I still think it's really good. I still think it's really good. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, cheers, y'all. Happy Friday. Mm. I do appreciate each and every one of you for commenting. Honestly, you make the show. It would be a really short show if I didn't read comments. So thank you for commenting. Uh. Gomer Kyle, uh, I know you were late, uh, but Trumpets <laughs> gives you a shout out. <laughs> and thanks to AI, he really did give you a shout out. So you can listen to that later. Um, but we're done with the motherfucking comments. Thank you all. And cheers once again for commenting uh, and subscribing. All right, we're done with the comments, like I said. Uh, but let's get this show on the road, y'all. And let's get into um, the weekly pop culture breakdown. And this week... The Puff Daddy scandal continues, y'all. Because if, even after getting accused by multiple women of drugging them, raping them, pimping them out, video recording all these incidents. And then last week we came out saying that this guy, uh, producer Rodney Jones, came out and said that Diddy was trying to groom him. Pinch his ass, poke his ass, grab his scrotum, whatever the fuck. Drug him, make him have sex and orgies with underage prostitutes. Um, you know, come over here, have a meeting while I shower naked and masturbate. Shit like that. This guy's all like, fuck. Well, now Rodney Jones this week is coming out. And he's saying that not only that all these crazy allegations that are probably true. Happened. But that a shooting that took place at a recording studio in Los Angeles in 2022 where a man named G, I don't know if that's really his name. That's the name he gave the police. What's your name? My name is G. All right, write it down. G got shot in the stomach. 
and in the leg. Outside of the club. Oh, no, not the club. I'm sorry. Outside of the recording studio, this motherfucker got shot. Well, Rodney Jones is now claiming that that's a lie. And that what he remembers is that Puff Daddy and his son Justin Combs were angry and they took this alleged G into the bathroom and they whooped his ass and then Puff Daddy took out a gun and shot the guy shot two shots boom boom and he they walked out of the bathroom and they told Rodney and the other bodyguards take this piece of shit outside of the recording studio dump him across the street I already called the cops they're under ambulance they're underway when they get here you tell them that he got shot by somebody who, like a drive-by. Somebody came by and drove by and shot him. And shit. And you better make sure that's the story he also tells the cops. That's what happened. That's what everybody told the cops. Including the guy who got shot. He told them. Yeah, yeah. Some, some car drove by. Some black guy. And he shot me. Some Puerto Rican guy. And they shot me. I don't know who he was. It was a black car. No license plate. And shit. This guy's saying it's a lie. It's a cover-up. That Diddy and his son did it. They did it inside the studio. And the cops never went in the studio or nothing. Because, they, because the incident happened outside. So this guy's coming out in court and now saying, hey, that shit. That they got away with. Well, here's the crazy part about all this story, man. Whether this is true or not, who knows, man. For sure this incident happened. And for sure the police have a statement from a man who got shot in the fucking stomach and in the leg. Name G on a street outside of the studio. They have a statement. But here's the crazy part, y'all. The supposed man with the name of G, capital letter G, has not been heard from or seen, or seen since the incident back in 2022. Nobody knows about his whereabouts. Not even his own mother. Yep. Oh no. I think he might be buried under some Ciroc fucking factory. They'll never find him. Um. Diddy's time is over, my friends. It's over. He is now being exposed. I don't know who he pissed off. I don't know what Jewish elitist he must have pissed off. That they said green light on this son of a bitch. And now the chickens. They've come back to roost. Yeah, 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 yeah. They've come back to roost. What goes around comes around. And if you don't pay the fine. Or suck dick or bow down to Illuminatus. You don't comply. This is what happens to you. You don't become multi-millionaire without giving something up first, my friend. And if you don't continue, you don't listen. This is what happens. They flip on you. So, yeah. I'm going to say is there's more motherfuckers like this. Diddy's not the only one. They're all like this. Mm. There's probably female artists out there that are just like this. I guarantee it. Uh, the problem is that they keep on bowing down. They keep on, you know, sucking that knob. Satan's, Satan's thorny cock. Uh... Because they like the lifestyle they live. You know? You gotta, con con you know, condemn and support Israel and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, well. Puff Daddy, it was good while it lasted. We'll see, it. we'll see how many years you get in prison. Dumb son of a bitch. We're moving on. He was rich, famous, and dangerous. Now, he's just rich. Uh, exposed. And, uh, I don't know, man. He might commit suicide, for all you know. They have to get hazed. Not hazed. They have to get conditioned. 
is more like it, Gomer. That's what Diddy said. That's what that guy saying that Diddy was doing to him. He was conditioning him into the lifestyle and shit. It's okay. This is what everyone does. It's what they tell you, bro. Anyways, move on to some more tragedy. Because Hannah Gutierrez Reed has now finally been found guilty of the murder of Haina Hutchins. I don't know how to say that name, but it's a white name. Well, this little girl looks white too. But apparently she's got Mexican in her. Oh, uh, oh well. Probably her dad, because you know how we fuck white women. What are you going to do? Um, yeah. From the day one. Fuck you, everybody. I defended Alec Baldwin. I may not like him. I may not support him. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, yeah, I don't like him. I may not support him. But when it comes down to it, when they read me the situation and what happened, I said, this man is innocent. Because unless you put yourself in his position, you won't understand. If I am on the set of a movie or of a TV show that, yeah, maybe I have, you know, let's just say I'm, I'm, I'm making a, a story up. I have money, a lot of money, and I'm making a goddamn TV show and a movie. And I'm paying all these motherfuckers. And we're filming. You know? I'm Tommy Wiseau. We're filming and shit. Everybody get around. You know? I did not, I did not hear her. I did not hear her. Oh, hi, Mark. Yeah, yeah. We're filming that movie. That's me. And some, there's a scene where there's gonna be guns and shit. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Number one, it's a movie. So obviously the gun's not going to be real. Number two, the fucking movie. So why the hell should there even be real bullets in it? Doesn't make any sense. So I hire some little Mexican girl, a little lesbian girl, whatever the fuck. I'm trying to be woke, get established, get motherfuckers from all kinds of demographics. So I hire this little woke ass Mexican girl, the lesbian and shit. And she says, she says she's an armorer and she's a professional. She knows all about prop guns in the movies. And I said, fuck yeah. And she works for fucking, uh, you know, 100 bucks a day. I said, fuck yeah, she's perfect. So I hire her ass. And on the day we're shooting the scene that involves a gun, she hands me a gun over because it's her job to load the guns, the prop guns, with fake bullets. And she hands me the gun. And uh, let's just uh, fuck it. I'm going to say it because, you know, I'm still angry. He who should not be named is behind the camera right there. And I'm fumbling my lines and shit. And he makes fun of me. And I said, fuck you, motherfucker. I know I have a fake gun. I know this has fake bullets. Because we're filming a fake movie. So I'm going to point it at him and pretend fucking fake kill him. Which is probably what happened. She said something silly and he said, ah, I gotta shoot you. And he went like that. But... This dumb little woke ass fuck Mexican lesbian little girl put real bullets when they're filming a fake movie. It was never Alec Baldwin's fault. Never. She's guilty. And they finally found her guilty. I don't know what a sentencing is. And to be honest with you, if I was the judge, I would have, she she will go to jail at the minimum me 3 years because at the, the why if you're hired to 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 be the armor in a movie, why would you even bother to bring real bullets to the set? Why? The idiocracy. This death. Yeah, I like Baldwin. She didn't been playing around and she, he was going to shoot the gun anyway. Somebody was going to get shot with a real bullet. Eventually, it was going to happen. Because this dumb little woke ass fuck little girl doesn't know how to do her fucking job like not bring real bullets to a goddamn movie set. It makes no fucking sense. I hope she gets a minimum of three years which she will not even serve all three years. Uh, but yeah, man. I don't feel sorry for her and I feel she does deserve this. It was her job. It's your fucking job to make sure there's no real bullets in the goddamn guns. You failed at your job. 
the one thing you were getting paid to do. You failed at it. Oh, my God. This is sad. A sad tragedy. Something that should have never have happened. That's all I'm going to say. I can't even cheer to this because somebody died. Somebody innocent who was probably just joking around with Alec. And he unfortunately killed her because he was just joking around as well. All because of an idiot that they hired because they need to hire different demographics and people of different genders and fucking supporters of Joe Biden. Fuck you. We're moving on. Man, y'all, I'm getting really pissed off when we're getting into this. I have to light this fucking joint right now. God damn it. Oh, my God. And I do have to get really, really stoned for this because this next story really pissed me off when I saw it. But none other than Nick Swartzen got escorted off stage after he bombed after only 15 minutes of being on on his stand-up routine somebody went up there and told him you're done give me the mic let's get off the stage the people are gonna burn the building down and they're asking for their money back because you're not funny you idiot i have a lot to say about this but I'm going to first let you see what the audience, unfortunately, was suffering through with this son of a bitch. Before, before the, the place went up there, they cut this mic off. They went up there and they walked him off stage and shit. But here it is. Uh, what people had to deal with. What people paid for, unfortunately. This is the status of, of American society right now. We're paying for ass. You wonder why we're not spending money? Our economy is shit. Give us something that's good. Look at this. <laughs> what are you saying right now? I'll say this. Let me just, let me ask you this. This is a weighted question. What? what? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you a joke. All right, here we go. Here we go. You can rally. All right, here we go. I'll rally this. Watch this show. Okay. Here we go. Um, Jason Statham as a meet and greet. I swear to God, it'll be fucking somewhere. amazing. I love you, fucking Rick. Let's go. Here we go. Jason Statham as the meet and Here we go. He's like, all right. Hold on, hold on, wait for it. All right, here we go. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. here we go. Okay, Jason Statham as the beekeeper. Here we go. As a Christmas carol, he is the caroler. Jason Statham as the caroler. Here we go. The guy, the people who are recording, his wife is saying, "Can can we, can we go ask for our money back?" And the guy says, "We're going to, we're going to. I just want to record some of this because this is so bad. It's historical. Look, I have never thought this guy was funny. I know Gomer just said he was great in Reno Nine One One." And he's been cameos in a lot of Adam Sandler movies and who knows what other ass Saturday Night Live or some bullshit. Uh, what's that other name? Deuce Bigelow's uh, uh, that guy. He, a lot of his movies, this guy's also been in, in, in ass. I have never thought in any of his cameos or anything he's ever done in his entire career that he was funny. That is my personal fucking opinion. I never thought this guy was funny. Now, I am not a professional comedian i am not a stand-up i don't i don't go up there and talk to people and shit although i i'm pretty sure i could but i don't do it all right it's not my thing but i'm pretty sure when a stand-up 
at the very least, has material. I mean, that's what it's called, material. They write stuff down and they memorize stuff and they have a routine that they go out there and do and shit. This guy looks like he just went up there and let me see what I can come up with. All right, that's fine and dandy. Because I pretty much winged the shit out of this show. Let's just see what comes out of my mouth, my opinions, and my brain. I like to talk a lot. But, at the very least, I think, I would have kept someone else's attention, you know, a little bit better than what he was doing. What the fuck is he doing? It was, to me, I, that was just a little bit, you know. They said he was doing this for 15 minutes, just like stumbling up there and, and like, uh, wait, wait, hang on. I got something else. What if this is funny? I might do something else. Gomer said he's trying to do Kaufman. Well, that would have been cool if that really was what he was trying to do. But this guy's not that badass and he's not that funny to even try to do Kaufman. Because instead, this idiot gave an explanation for his actions. On X. Twitter. He says, I just casually woke up on TMZ. Travel tip. Don't drink and take edibles in high altitudes. Fucking brain diarrhea. I'll make it up to you, Beaver Creek. So his excuse, Gomer, is that he was just stoned. Fuck you! Oh, I mean, like, fuck this guy 100%. Fuck this guy. Be professional. You're fucking 50-something years old. You're going to do stand-up? A bunch of people paid probably $70 for a ticket to see you? Not be prepared? I don't think you're funny, but obviously these idiots that bought a ticket thought you're funny. And you don't even fucking give them some something for their time, for the money they gave you. Fucking idiot. I was just really high. Shut the fuck up. Ah, shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. And it just goes to show you, man, that, that Adam Sandler is a good person and a talented fucking person above all smart very smart and talented but he's a good person because from the very beginning and we i, I make fun of him a lot for this uh, but from the very beginning he has always put all of his fucking friends in everything he's ever done his projects his movies and shit and, and this guy's one of them this guy is one of them, so he's always put them in his projects because he wants to share the spotlight and he wants to give them an opportunity. He's like, here, here's your platform, your, your start so that you can jump and be as good as I am, maybe even better. But all of his friends, all of them, and I hate to even say this, but even the late, great Norm MacDonald, all of them are fucking... Lazy motherfuckers. Stoners just like this guy. That have potential. And Sandler saw it in them and puts them in their projects hoping that these guys will fucking do something for themselves. And they don't, bro. They never grew out of whatever the fuck this is. Norm didn't either, man. At the very end, he started taking his little podcast seriously. But Norm didn't either. And everyone would tell you, man. I've seen interviews where I think uh, David Letterman said, and uh, he said, Norm MacDonald is the funniest man to me that I've ever met in my entire life. He is just like lazy. He doesn't work. He goes, if he worked, he goes, he got famous and he did it without even working or trying. Because he is the funniest man I've ever met in my life. He goes, imagine what he could have done if he would have tried. That's what Letterman said about fucking Norm. So I tell you, Adam Sandler is a great person for putting all his friends and trying to give them a platform. But fuck them, because they're all like this idiot.
who go, go on stage and act like asses. Disappointing, man. Fuck this guy. I don't think this guy's funny. Uh, cheers to Sandman. Uh, you are great. And I just saw, actually, I just saw that movie. What's it called? Uh, with Adam Sandler. Uh, uh, fuck. Uh, uh Spaceman. Uh, Paul Daniels, a spider and shit in space. I'll tell you like that. That's a good fucking movie. Uh, I like, I like this Sandler, this old Sandler, because he's no longer doing his stupid voices and, and shit. He's, he's, he's taking acting seriously. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, that movie made me cry. A review is coming one of these Sundays for that movie. Uh, just so y'all know, in case you watch it, watch the reviews on Sundays for the, the digital release. Uh, but watch that movie. It's a good movie. Uh, it's not a funny movie. It's a sad movie. Depressing at times. But it's good. It'll open up your heart. You cold sons of bitches. Alright. It's back to it. Because this week... <laughs> Oh, uh, hang on. Let me take a, Let me let me chug this beer and, and probably open another one real quick. <sighs> All right, let me get another beer here. Here you go. Cheers, y'all. <sighs> All right. Um. Uh, this week, Bad Baby, Cash Me Outside Girl, is in the news again. We all know she got pregnant by her, this, her black boyfriend here. I forget what his name was. D Danielle or Danielle, something like that. And shit, um, uh, he's a pretty good looking guy. And you know, he's a smart motherfucker. If he went and got this little bitch pregnant, he's making millions of dollars by selling her body on the internet. Fucking genius. I wish I could have met her. I would have gotten her pregnant right away, too. Um, no, no, but that's not the reason. <laughs> that's not the reason why the fuck she's in the news. Because apparently she was involved in some kind of brawl at a restaurant in Hollywood. Here's a video from that fucking uh, TMZ and shit. Actually, it wasn't even TMZ. Somebody at the fucking restaurant took a video of it and then they sold it to TMZ and then TMZ puts their stamp on it like they fucking did it. But it wasn't them. They bought it off of somebody who sold it to them. Anyways, this person was a restaurant, a sushi restaurant, and then they go all crazy. They start fucking fighting. This chick is pregnant too. She don't give a fuck. And they're, I'm getting out of here, bitch. Yes. And she walks away, man. It, it, it goes back to it is that you can take, you can take the girl out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out of the girl. I mean, look at that ass. It's a big ass for a little girl. You know what I'm saying? Now that she's pregnant, her ass is bigger and her titties are twice the size and heavier too, full of milk. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, this is just like, you know, this is just pregnancy hormones and shit. She's angry and when she goes home, she's going to be sad and crying. It's not a big deal. It happens all the time. That's why you keep a pregnant woman locked up in the house when they can't go out and act crazy with their emotions and shit. Everybody knows that. I'm hungry. Stay put. Stay in the couch. What do you want? I will be right back. I'll get anything you want. Stay put. Be right back. And then you fucking split for an hour and a half and shit. Smoke weed. <laughs> cheers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And cheers to this guy who got this little girl pregnant because he saw a money maker if there was one and shit. I don't know why they're not doing porn already. Pregnant porn and shit. Cheers. Yeah, we're going to get shut down. But since we are talking about porn, we're definitely getting shut down. Um, this week, if you used Meta or Facebook or Instagram or whatever the fuck you want to call it, you might have run into one of these ads from a company named Perky AI. And the ad featured an underage photo of Jenna Ortega blurred out saying no clothes install our app now so you can do the same thing to your underage fucking <laughs> favorite celebrities holy shit 
Well, luckily, Jenna Ortega's people right away were like, what the fuck? Because everybody was getting this ad on the Facebook, on the IG, shit. <laughs> and uh, her people contacted Meta and Mark Zuckerberg, and we're all like, what the fuck is this shit? And they took these ads down. They took a while because the guy paid. I paid for 1,600 views. I better get 16,000 views before you take it down. And Meta's all like, all right, we'll leave it on for a few more hours. We'll post it. So enough people saw this and downloaded the app so they could do the same to her. But it's too late already, you all. It's too fucking late. The damage has been done. People have now got it in their heads that you can take videos of porn stars that look or have or have a similar frame like Jenna Ortega and then tell AI to put Jenna Ortega's face on it and AI will do it and you're basically seeing Jenna Ortega get gang banged by 12 black guys it's possible it's out there unfortunately and there's nothing that the internet or the government or celebrities the victims in this can do about it. This is a very serious subject because at the same time, I mean, it's not really them. It's an actual porn star that already exists and has done these acts and the videos are there. The AI is just putting the face of the celebrity on it. And it does it really good too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here are some of the top celebrities that right now that are the most viewed, number one, <laughs> believe it or not, is Hermione Granger, Emma Emma Stone. I think her name Emma Stone. No, it's not Emma Stone. Emma Watson, the little Britain girl, Hermione from Harry Potter, is the most watched. <laughs> Deep fake little girl on the internet, followed by the great and marvelous, pristine. She should. I, I don't know why she wasn't number one. But Scarlett Yost Hansen now. Scarlett Yost Hansen. Um, it's been heavily, heavily watched. There are thousands of, and some of the best, <laughs> most realistic videos I've ever seen in my life. Uh, Scarlett, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Twitch streamer Pokimane is on this. Number three, most watched, most fucking videos. Number four is uh, Ariana, Ariana Grande. Uh, Elizabeth Olsen trails at number five. Number six is Gal Gadot, the Lizard Queen, bowing down to Mossad. Bowing down to more than Mossad in these videos. <laughs> Addison Ray, whoever the fuck that is. It looks like fucking Liv, Liv Morgan from fucking... In WE, but I don't know who the Addison Ray is. Billy Eilish is, is watched a lot too. Taylor Swift and Margot Robbie. Um so yeah. This is getting pretty out of hand, man. I mean, I'm kinda glad. I'm really glad. There's, there's only like two of you motherfuckers watching right now. Because if I was famous, there'd be videos of me on there like this. Holy shit. And I don't think I would like that. You know, I definitely don't mind all these women's videos on there. I really don't. Uh, but if my fucking face was on this, I think I would fucking, I would fucking flip out, you know? Somebody, you know, somebody fucking me. And shit. You know, that'd be weird. Especially if I wasn't there. Like, if it was me and it was real, I mean, I'd be okay with it. But I'm not, not like, fake. How... Uh, do you think the AI will start getting regulated, guys? That the government will start regulating this shit? Putting some kind of... You can't fucking take someone's image? I mean, how do you copyright your face? Can you copyright your face? That's something that, that people are going to start coming up with. Copyright my face? And no one can use my image without my permission unless you give me some money! Damn, I better... I better find out because I need to copyright this fucking face. Nobody can look like this except for me. Unless you give me some money. 
This is getting out of hand, y'all. This is getting seriously out of hand. But we're gonna move on from this fake shit. We're gonna move on to some real stuff that's going on. Because there is a show that will premiere soon. And it's called The Dark Side of Children's Shows. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, they're going to expose all the molestations and disgustingness and, uh, and uh, uh, supposed uh, things that happen behind the scenes at Nickelodeon with child stars. And one child star that is being advertised in the trailer that came out of nowhere that's actually going to come out on the show and speak out. I talk about the experience he had is none other than Drake Bell. And he's going to come out and talk about how Brian Peck, the infamous Brian Peck, sexually molested him while he was filming Josh and Drake. Groomed him. You know, Brian Peck has been working on kids' shows for a long fucking time. A long time. Brian Peck, I think back when they were doing Growing Pains, and uh, they were doing Growing Pains, and this guy, uh, DiCaprio, I think was in Growing Pains. I think it was called Growing Pains. I don't even remember. DiCaprio was in, this guy was a producer there, and he was, you know, the, the rumor is that he was grooming DiCaprio and shit also. And that's why DiCaprio likes little girls. Because this guy likes little boys. He's also in charge of a lot of other shows there. Nickelodeon and shit. There's other people he fucked up. He's like that guy, uh, Schneider. Dan Schneider. He's another motherfucker. Um, this is bad, man. Very bad that a company like Nickelodeon knew about the past offenses of some of the people they hired because these guys, they had previous offenses. Maybe charges that were dropped, shit like that, but it was in their records. And these motherfuckers still got hired to be around children. And then these children grow up and they're some of the most fucked up celebrities we see on TV. I mean, we talked about this maybe like last year. All right. This guy was sending dick. I'm talking about Drake Bell. He was sending dick pics to a 14 year old on his Instagram that he met a fan. You know what I'm saying? He was sending dick pics. And, then, and this is all while his current wife is pregnant with his first child. And then she wants to divorce him because of what's going on with him. And being accused by this other little girl says he's sending me dick pics and shit. Then they catch a video of him in his car in a parking lot. Fucking doing whippets. Filling a balloon up and then going. <sighs> with the balloon. Getting like fucking getting brain dead. Because he's depressed. Why? You wonder why? Because this fat son of a bitch over here probably fingered his asshole when he was a little boy and shit. That kind of shit will fuck you up for the rest of your life. What do you think you're going to end up doing? These motherfuckers need to pay, man. I know I know this guy. I think uh, Brian Peck went to jail or some shit. I don't, I don't think nothing happened to Dan Schneider. Nothing has happened to Dan Schneider. But I know this motherfucker went to jail for like a year, a year and a half or some ass. But these, these type of people need to be fucking, fucking tied to a pole naked in the middle of the fucking... Of the village or the, the the city, everybody comes out with their sticks, beats the shit out of them. That's what needs to happen to motherfuckers like this. So that way they make an example and show anybody else tries to do the same shit this asshole does, the same shit is gonna happen to you, and no one will be touching little boys or girls. No one if you do that shit. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's not how <laughs> that's not how it works nowadays, and that's why shit don't happen. All right. Why did motherfuckers back in the day, they didn't go cheat on their wives or on their husbands 
Because if you did, they would shame you. They put a big A. <laughs> they they put a big A, right? The Scarlet Letter. No, they put a big W for whore on your fucking chest. And you walk around town and everybody calls you a whore. All right, that's embarrassing. So nobody wants to cheat nobody back then. All right, just... We, we're, we're living in tremendous times, people. The tremendous times where ass is happening left and right because we need to go back to the olden days. The old punishment and shit. Hey, you know what? Uh, eye for an eye. You, you fucking, you know, you, 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 you run over somebody and they lose their legs. Guess what? We chop off your legs too, motherfucker. That's what it's got to be. Fuck that. When you go, people are not going to learn to stop doing their shit unless they fucking get shown what it is. Yeah, yeah. Son of man for president, 2028. Cheers. But I'm going to go ahead and end. Unfortunately, I don't have any yeezys. Get the quiet. Yeezy. My yeezy. He kept the quiet this week. <laughs> he did. He did. I'm not fucking lying. He even deleted everything off his Instagram. Every last post. And he only posted one. And it was just a short clip of talking with his little girl. Uh, uh, you don't want no problems. It's your bestie. Miss Miss Westie. Yeah, yeah. It was just a, a clip of, of the video. And shit. Announcing it. But he deleted everything. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, no yays a this week. Nothing happened. His wife stayed at home. You know, she fucking had probably mechanical dildos tied to a bed and all this crazy ass happening to her. She had a lot of fun and so did Kanye. But unfortunately, they didn't bother to show any of us like they usually do. Um, So we're going to end it tonight. Uh, But the, the closest thing we got to debauchery. And that's Vince McMahon. Because the latest WWE 2024 K, WWE game commercials showcase a short clip of McMahon and Charlotte Flair only to have Vince McMahon's face blurred out. And in a call with investors, Ariel Manuel, which is one of the richest Jewish men who now own or now is literally the guy at the top of the pyramid, the Jewish Mossad pyramid at TKO Holdings was asked why is McMahon's face blurred out from that commercial and he said hey Vince McMahon is never coming back to TKO Holdings to this company he will never be on the board or have a vote or say I'll come back to that in a minute he is not part of this company and as far as I'm concerned, there's no need to be showing him at all. That commercial was already filmed. Unfortunately, it has to come out. We're not going to show him. Because he doesn't exist in this company anymore. Yeah, and just like he says down there, they have a brand new no shitting on employees policy around here. So no defecating on people's heads while they're sucking someone else's dick. We're not doing that here. It's a good policy, you know. And it's a good, it's a, it's a good bullshit story, if you ask me, Manuel. You dumbass. You say this man has no say in this company, yet he still owns majority, a fucking very large portion of the stocks. And I know here the last few months he has sold a huge part of his shares. But he hasn't sold all of his shares. He sold enough to probably pay for lawyers or probably some bribes to get some of this. Hey, here's some money. Don't tell people I shat in your mouth. Please. Made you eat it. All right, well, you're getting fucked. Some shit like that. I don't know. This is really disgusting stuff he's into. But anyways. Yeah, he still has shares in the company, a lot of shares, probably more than any of the members on the board. He still has a vote here, bro. And that's the problem. The only good thing coming out of this is that, you know what? He's really freaking old. 
He's got a shitload of problems in his life. He's got no one to lean on. Hopefully his heart will give off. And that'll be the end of it. Everyone's problems will be solved. And, 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 and once upon a time. And not, not long ago, actually. Once upon a time, maybe three years ago. Maybe three years ago. If Vince McMahon would have died, it would have been a sad day in wrestling history. Sadly, his legacy is ruined and will never, ever be what it would have been if this hadn't come out to life. He's done. He could die tonight, tomorrow. He could die in five years. No one's going to celebrate him or his legacy or everything he did for the wrestling business. No one. And anyone who does might as well fucking end their career right there as well. Yeah. Vince, you were a great man. But you ruined it for yourself. Ah, I'm going to cheers to wrestling. Cheers to wrestling. But that is it for the weekly pop culture breakdown. I'm very sad we didn't have any yeze because I want a yeze. Uh, but let's cheer to the end of this. Cheers. All right, let's get the show moving and move on to the weekly comic book nerd shit. Um, my bad. <laughs> Let me play the intro. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. <coughs> Actually, I probably shouldn't have played it. Because uh, I'm going to start with this. Uh, last night, Akira Toriyama passed away at the age of 68 years of age. 68. From an apparent uh, plain and simple, to put it in, in, in simple, lameless terms, uh, a brain aneurysm. One of his veins from his brain popped and leaked blood, and they call it an acute hematoma. It's a brain aneurysm. And it sucks because uh, that can happen to anybody at any age. At any random fucking time for no reason at all. Sixty-eight's pretty young, man. This guy's a legend and will never be forgotten for coming up with one of the greatest fucking animes, mangas, that's ever existed, period. Uh not only that. But so many more artists and writers and creators that he has inspired. There's so many animes and mangas right now that would not exist if it wasn't for this man and his fucking and in, and in Dragon Ball and for him, him, him coming up with Dragon Ball. Oh, it's it's insane. I I didn't expect to hear this on Thursday. I didn't expect to see to, to hear that this happened Thursday night, I think. It uh it sucks ass to me. Um I love Dragon Ball, man. Obviously Super Saiyan Joker, you love Dragon Ball. 
I love Dragon Ball. <sighs> Goku is one of the greatest characters. In a way, it is kind of a rip off of Superman with a twist to it. But they're just something so childlike. And it really was that about Goku that was so lovable. It was that he was a kid and he never really grew up because he wasn't really raised. He was raised, you know, he was ignorant and dumb and good because. You know, his grandfather raised him a li for a little bit. And that's really all the values he learned is just to be a good person and shit. Um, and he remains like that throughout the whole series. He's a worthless husband. He never provides for his family and he's never there to raise any of his fucking children or be a good role model to them. Never. But he's a good person who would sacrifice himself to fucking make sure everyone else is okay. And it's one of the fucking greatest things you could write for children. A Jesus character, a Superman. It's a sad day in anime manga uh, history. Super Saiyan Joker that says that he actually passed away the first, that it just stayed private. So he had been dead. For almost a week is what you're telling me? Shit. Damn. You know what's going to happen? What's going to happen with Di Di uh, Dragon Ball? I forget what it's called. Diama, Daima, Diama. This new, new thing that they were just finished that's going to come out. That to me was basically replacing Dragon Ball GT or something. I don't know what it is exactly. I like the animation and that it looks better than Super. Um, this is sad, man, because I don't know what's going to happen to the future of this franchise. I don't know what's going to happen when, when this franchise came out. Or what, what's going to happen to this franchise. I mean, to me, look, because... Uh, Dragon Ball, the original... And this is what pisses me off, because a lot of the new generation just completely ignore Dragon Ball. And just Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z. Fuck you! There was a series before that. And that's when this guy's a literal child. That's... I love Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball, the first series, I cherish so much, man. I love it. It's fucking... Obviously, Dragon Ball Z is more mature and more about fighting. And, 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 and you know, even the drawings are obviously more mature. But fuck, Dragon Ball is perfect. It's the perfect anime. And I love Dragon Ball, man. When he's a little boy, I love it so much. And he's so innocent. And fun, it's funny and it's just great, man. I love the original Dragon Ball. Uh, Dragon Ball Diama, yeah, Diama, Diama, or whatever. He says it's continuing, and he even saw he even has a new series, Sandlands, coming in April. Sandlands, there's a fucking game from it. It's like a. Because he was writing a manga and the manga is like this little demon boy. I forget if he's called a Nephilim or not. But he's like a demon boy. And they live in a desert. Uh, there's a fucking uh, a game that's about to come out for the PlayStation and shit for that. It looks it looks pretty cool. Um, and it looks the the, uh, the style of art as far as the characters and designs, they look like they could be in Dragon Ball. Uh, in fact, the little demon boy looks like something that came out of Dragon Ball. It really does. But because it's him drawing it too, it's just a different story. Um, I'm excited for that. I know there was already a man. There's been ma a, a manga series of that specific thing that they're coming out with the Sandlands. There's a game coming out about it. Um, it's just sad that his his brain is gone, man. The 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 ingenuity, the stories are gone. 
And we're going to have to rely on motherfuckers who think they know what he thought like. And you know goddamn well that never really works out. That's the sad part about this. Uh, you know what? Toriyama-san. Cheers. I wish I had sake. I would do a sake bomb for you, Toriyama-san. Thank you for years of entertainment. Years and years of entertainment. And Goku is a good character. I mean, he's Jesus. He's Superman. This guy did good when he made this character. Cheers, Toriyama. Toriyama-san will miss you. Uh, I, I gotta take a hit after that, man. I'm a little bummed out. A little bit, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I am. It sucks when you get old and you, like, you know, the stuff you grew up with starts dying on you. It sucks. You know. Anyway. Fuck you, haters. Because Avatar, the last airbender, has been renewed for two more seasons. Netflix straight up came out and announced we're renewing it not for one for two we're gonna finish the story we're finishing Aang's journey and his story book two is coming for season two and we're gonna see Toth oh my god I wonder if they're going to go full woke and choose an actual little blind girl. Or they're just going to choose a girl, a regular little girl that could resemble her and put fucking contacts on her. I don't know, but I'm excited for Toph for season two. But the most thing actually out of all of season two that I am excited about, get ready for this. The boulder. The boulder challenges you. Dude, they could get Dwayne The Rock Johnson to be the boulder cameo in the episode, and it would be so fucking perfect. He just has to do a Randy Savage voice, but he, he's the boulder. The boulder's here. That's so fucking badass, bro. I want that so bad. In anything in fucking season two, I'm going to start campaigning on Twitter and X to have Dwayne The Rock Johnson come out as a cameo as the boulder in season two of Avatar, bro. I will not rest until this happens. That's all I'm going to say. But we're also getting season three, which is book three, which is fire. We're getting that too. And uh, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for that too. Because the best thing out of book three that I love so much is the Easter Island players. The time where they go to the theater and they see the entire three seasons acted out by amateur actors. <laughs> and Aang is played by a little girl. <laughs> Toph is played by a big muscly guy. It's just the best fucking parody of everything they've been through. I just want to see that. And if I could see something similar to when they went Taika Waititi, the only thing he did in those Thor movies is when he did that play with Matt Damon being Loki and shit and Sam Neill being Odin. If they do something like that, it would be so fucking amazing. Joku, you're right, metal bending, metal bending. But dude, I'm sorry. The greatest memories I have is season two, the boulder. <laughs> I love, I know he's a nothing character, but I love it when he comes out, the boulder. And then season three is the Easter Island players episode. To me is the best fucking thing ever. Oh my god. Um I can't wait. I can't wait. And I'm so happy that this got renewed 
two seasons because at least Netflix is committing. We're going to finish the story even if it's not a hit next season. Because look, it premiered to, I think, uh, 22 million views or some shit like that. I might be wrong. It might be 2.2. I don't know. Some shit like that. 22 million views. I'm throwing a number out. This week, it went down to like 18. But that's still a lot of views, man. Uh, they say that every other show, though, that's been a hit, like One Piece, that the views actually go up the next week, etc., etc. So, but it doesn't matter. They committed, and now they've said we renewed it for two more seasons. So at least they're going to finish the story. Here's where my big uh, dun 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 comes in. Let me take a, a drink for this before I start ranting. To you haters, these actors are going to get better. I promise you. I believe in these kids. They are children. It's probably their first jobs ever. Cut them some slack. They're going to get really comfortable with the people they're portraying and they will get better. All right. I pray to God. I hope that Netflix and the showrunners follow the same outline that the fucking cartoon, I want to say anime, but the cartoon fucking did. And I hope they follow the same outline and do the three books and then Sozin's comic will be a movie separate from the three seasons. A Netflix original movie called Sozin's comic after season three. Because if they crunch all of book three and Sozin's comic in 10 episodes, maybe 12, maybe they extend it and they go 12, it's still not going to be good enough. Sozin's comic by itself needs to be a movie. The final battle, everything that happens that last day needs to be a movie by itself. That's all I'm saying. I really hope they don't drop the ball because people people are very decisive. Some people like this. Some people don't. This is a 50-50 in the audience. I think it's going back and forth on this. There's room for improvement. Yes, it's not perfect. But I'm, I'm, I'm very, very sure that this will get better. And I hope they don't drop the ball with these things that I mentioned. I really do. I want them to include the boulder. I want them to do the Easter Island players, for sure. Um, and I want Sozin's Comet to be its own separate fucking movie. Hour and a half, hour and 40 minute movie separate from the three seasons so that it could do it justice to the ending. Because Sozin's Comet was long and it was perfect. Uh, I remember that little Nickelodeon movie when it finally came out and shit. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, uh, I'm excited. I'm happy. I can't wait for more of this is, is all I'm going to say. Uh, go watch this. I mean it. If you've seen it already, go watch it a second time to give it more views on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, please go see it. All right. We need more views. We need this to be really popular. We need these kids to fucking get better. Get more confidence in their little little asses. And shit. Cheers. Avatar. Last Airbender. Netflix. And cheers to one of the greatest out of Houston, Texas, Jose Treviño. Repite su nombre, por favor. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano, mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Oh, yeah. 
tienes envidia, puto. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Jose Triviño. And remember, it's always. Motherfucker. We love you. Cheers. I got to pop open a new beer for you, motherfucker, just for that. Piche Jose Trevino showed up. Hey, Joe Trevino. And when you get a chance on Sunday, watch the comments video. <laughs> because Trumpet sent you a shout out, dude. <laughs> and you know how we do in this channel? He did it in his voice. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers! Thank you for being here, Joe. We love you. <sighs> all right, all right. Moving on to some real. Well, actually, no. <laughs> I was gonna say some real. Now, moving on to some more fake American agent shit. Or Americans trying to be Asians because that's what Avatar is, according to all the haters. It's not an anime, it's a cartoon because Americans made it. Fuck you, it was anime inspired. Anyways, moving on to more Americanized Asian cultures, I guess. Uh, there's going to be a brand new Karate Kid movie. Yeah. And it's going to star none other than Child star i think i don't know where i've seen this kid ben wang that's his real name i'm not trying to be funny you dicks let's not be racist here he is a child being assholes ben wang i don't know where his kid's from but he probably knows karate or martial arts of some sort because they're sure as hell not gonna have to pay another actor to do it when they can just fucking find someone who can do it so i'm sure he can fight but guess what? They're bringing back Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan. Well, obviously, they couldn't bring back Pat uh, Morita. I think it's Morita, if I remember. Uh, but they couldn't bring Mr. Miyagi back because the, the man died a few years ago. Whatever. And I think Jackie Chan played the Mr. Miyagi character and the Jaden Smith version, if I remember correctly. Um, I don't, I don't, I never saw the Jaden Smith Karate Kid. So here's my question to any of you who are here tonight, if you're watching it, uh, if you watched it, does Jackie Chan play Miyagi? Is that his name in the fucking version of the Jaden Smith? Is he Mr. Miyagi or he's just a different guy? That's my question. Because if they're bringing in Ralph Macchio. Then obviously Ralph Macho is going to play himself, the original Karate Kid and shit. Uh, but at the same time, it makes me wonder, because if it is going to be the original Karate Kid, Ralph Macho playing his character, is this going to tie into Cobra Kai? Because Ralph Macho is in Cobra Kai and shit. Uh, so I, there's a lot of questions for me that brings this up because I honestly only seen the first two Karate Kid movies because I know there's three and then even after the third one I think there's the next Karate Kid which is played by a girl a girl is the next Karate Kid and then it's the Jaden Smith one and then it's Cobra Kai which is currently happening uh, so I don't know uh, I'm just uh, confused as to uh, what continuity is gonna this? Is this a, a movie on its own? Is this continuity to Cobra Kai? Is Jackie Chan playing Mr. Miyagi? Or just a different master? I don't know what he played in the Jaden Smith one. I don't. I don't I never saw that one. Um It's tied in. Alright. You're saying that it's tied in. Well, Whatever it is, uh, I'm 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 for it. You want to know why? Because this franchise hasn't tried to cram on one of these movies down our throats every year, every six months. You know what I'm saying? It's been long enough that I don't I don't 
It's been a long time since I last saw a Karate Kid movie, even advertised. I'm down. I would watch this. Ralph Macchio, Jackie Chan, Little Asian Boy. Yeah, I would watch it. That sounds really bad the way I said it, but god damn it, you, it's about a movie. If you're listening, I just realized that sounded really bad. Sorry about that. This movie sounds cool, is what I'm trying to say. All right. Rob Machio, Jackie Chan, the little Asian boy, the Karate Kid movie. There you go. Now it sounds better. All right. Anyways. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm for this. I'm, I'm down. I'm down. Joe Trevino says that Jackie Chan was a different name and a different master for uh, Jaden Smith. Okay. So what I'm thinking, because there's no details about this. What I'm thinking is that Rob Machio will be the original Karate Kid. And Jackie Chan will be the master from the Jaden Smith. And they'll combine those two. It'll be like the same universe. But somehow they all meet this little little Asian Ben Wang here who wants to be the next Karate Kid. And both of them try to teach him to be the next Karate Kid. That sounds cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. You all, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. I'm down with this. I am down with the next Karate the next, next, next Karate Kid, technically. You know? Tears to Ben Wang, Jackie Chan, and Raul Machio, who didn't age well at all. This motherfucker used to be cute and hot as fuck. I don't know what happened. Tears for money. All right, all right. It's a couple of trailers that premiered this week. And believe it or not, we got a trailer for some, some crazy ass trailer, bros, called Parasite the Grey. And it's based on an anime where these aliens land on Earth and infect people. And then when they come out of like whatever their fucking faces or whatever, I just fuck. Of course, this is based on an anime. Of course, this is Japanese. Because there ain't nobody in America disgusting enough to come up with something like this. And I gotta say, this is awesome. <laughs> I am excited as fuck as this about this. I don't know nothing about Parasite the Grey. But I guarantee you that this weekend, I am going to go on my Jack Sparrow Bay using my Windscribe VPN, and I ain't going to download the entire fucking anime. And I am going to binge watch it before this comes out. And I ain't going to review the shit out of this. And by the time this comes out and I start reviewing this, I would have already watched the anime, so I'll be an expert on it. I promise you. I'm going to be that kind of a nerd. This weekend, I'm downloading the anime. Whatever, seasons, everything. I'm going to binge watch it. I'm going to become an expert. Because this looks sick as fuck. I can't even express how ex amazing this looks. God bless the Japanese and their sick, twisted minds. I don't know what kind of environment they're brought, in, brought up in when they're children. But these are the kind of nightmares. These are the nightmares brought to life right here. Holy fuck. I like this. I don't know if any of you have ever seen Parasite, the anime. It's not called... Uh, I know the anime is not called The Grey. It's just called Parasite. This fucking... I'm ready for this. Like I said, I'm about to become an expert over the weekend. I'm going to download this and watch it like crazy. But this, this fucking trailer came out and I was just like, what is this? And this Korean, apparently. It's Korean. And, um, and it is going to be subtitles. I am pissed off about that because I hate having to read because I have to re rewind it and read a little bit and shit. But he's not American. It's not going to be dubbed. It might be dubbed for Netflix. I don't know. I might have to check that out. It might it might have a dub. If it does, that's badass because this is coming out on Netflix, y'all. Netflix is on fire. Um, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. If you have the money, subscribe to Netflix. Because this is the kind of content they're making. And they're paying the Koreans uh, $12 an hour to make badass shit. Because the Americans and the fucking, uh, the fucking the Chinese won too much money for their productions. Mm -hmm. This looks good, y'all. And I'm very excited about this. I'm not going to lie. Parasite. Uh, coming to Netflix soon. I don't remember when because I'm high and drunk. I'm excited. There's another trailer they showed this week coming straight out Amazon. And it was none other than the Fallout trailer. And this was three minutes. And it finally explained to me what exactly this was. Because the only thing I knew about Fallout is that I would go out when I lived in the wokest city in Texas, the capital, ATX, Austin. When I lived there, I would go out to go get fucked up and drunk downtown. And I'd get high and do a bunch of drugs, take up a couple mushrooms and a restroom with some weird hippie or maybe an acid, or some, maybe an ecstasy pill with some chick I was dancing with. I don't know. Something like that would happen. But I'd be all fucked up. And I'd finally get home, two or three in the morning, and my Palestinian roommate named Yusuf would be playing this fucking game, which I knew nothing about. And I would sit down, and I just remember him running in the desert, and then these like giant roaches or bugs attacking him and shit. And I was all like, all right, I'm going upstairs. This is just, I don't want to dream of this fucking shit. And I went upstairs. So I don't know nothing about this game except for that. But this trailer finally explains it to me. Yeah. And apparently, this is uh, some people uh, from Black, like that movie with uh, Brendan Fraser, Blaster the Plast, or whatever, where these fucking people, it was World War II, and they fucking built a bunch of bunkers. And they all sheltered themselves because the nukes were dropped all over the world. But the world didn't end. Well, I mean, it did. But people still survived, but everything's all fucking Mad Max. Well, these people that live in the bunker, well, this little girl says, well, the plan is, is after 200 years, we're supposed to leave and start civilization again. And everybody's like, you can't go out there. You can't go out there. And she's like, I'm going out there, you pussies. And she goes out there. And she sees, you know, she's ignorant and dumb because she doesn't know that the world is lawless and fucking mutations and shit. And not only that, but there's some crazy kind of Illuminati fucking uh, tyrannical Nazi regime of police also out there. They use big mecha suits. Um, This looks way better than Borderlands. That movie sounded, looked really Hollywood. And sh I mean, I was excited for Borderlands. This looks way a hundred times better than Borderlands, a thousand times better than Borderlands. I like this. I don't even know. Like I said, I don't know nothing about this, but I like this and I'm for it. And the guy who's playing the guy without the nose and shit, I forget what that actor is, man, but the actor is good and underrated. That motherfucker's such a good actor and his range is so good. It's just a goddamn shame he hasn't been given the opportunity of getting like a, a, a being cast as a lead. But I think this is a step towards that because uh, it looks like he's one of the leads. He's like that the, the sheriff or something. Um, I like this. I like this trailer. I like the vibe it gives. It's not too. There's some silliness, but it's not too silly because it's still real. I mean, I think the silliness comes from this little girl's ignorance because she doesn't realize how dangerous the world really is because she's been shown like fucking. VHS videos or shit or whatever the fuck they had down there in these bunkers they built so she doesn't know how dangerous the world is and that's where the funny parts are going to come in from but it doesn't look like this is silly it looks like this is serious and then some serious there's some just some serious stakes I think what's going to happen is whatever this and this just from watching the trailer and I don't know nothing about the game from just watching the trailer it seems like the government, who, who the, this police force that's in charge, eventually they find this little girl and this little girl tells them that, oh, we have a bunch of bunkers and there's like thousands of us down there and shit and I'm coming out here 
And so then these police force wants to go down there and kill all of them. I don't know why, but that's what it looks from what I saw in the trailer, some of it. Because it looks like someone's like that's what's happening. Uh I'm gonna love this. I already know. I'm gonna love this more than than Borderlands. I'm gonna love this more than Halo, I think. And just by watching the trailer, because this looks really interesting. And it's a damn shame that I never played the game. And the only thing I know about the game is what I just explained to you. Me being drunk on drugs, coming home to my roommate, playing some shit. Uh, but it looks good. And we'll see. We'll see. We will see. But what we're not done seeing, and what people are not done seeing, is Dune Part 2. Because on a $100 million budget in the year 2024, a move, a year, you know, a, a decade where oh, the biggest movie in the, the past five years has been Barbie that literally made half a billion, made $500 million in the first week. That's, that's what the times we're living in. A movie named Barbie made half a billion dollars the first week. That's the decade we're living in. But Dune 2, on a budget of $190 million, on the first week, has already made $197. Let's just round it up. $200 million. It's made its budget, which is amazing for a big blockbuster movie in 2024. To make its budget in one week. That's fucking good. The last movie, I think the first week, only had made 70 million. 70 million dollars. And in its total run made 400 million dollars. This already made half of that in the first week. It's a hit. It's more of a hit than the first one. I think obviously the first one was because there was COVID. Not only that, but it was released simultaneously on HBO Max. So half of your fucking... No, more than half. Three-thirds of your audience just stayed at home and watched it. Instead of going and paying for it. This is good, man. The, this, the first movie is fucking gold. Cinematic gold. I've read the book. I've read uh, the Dune book. I've read Dune Messiah. I, I've never watched... I've never read Children of the Dune. But I watched Children of the Dune series from the Sci-Fi Channel. With uh, James McAvoy in it. I watched that. So, I, 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 I know a lot of it. And I can tell you that the first movie... I mean, from reading the book, bro... The first movie is the way I imagined it. When you read the book and you're they're describing these things to you, this guy literally just showed what you're seeing in your imagination. I mean, it was exactly like it. It was perfect. That's all I can say. I can't even say that about the 1984 one because the 1984 one was all like, did the director even read the book? Not only does it not look like what I read, but it didn't even... The story's not the same. What's going on here? This is perfect. Uh, and part two is a masterpiece. He did change something in part two. And it's just one little thing. I mean, I know, there's something. I'm obviously, I mean, there's some things. Even in part one, there were some things out of sequence... There's a, some part that doesn't happen towards the end of that. Supposed to happen at towards the end of that. And, and, and shit and a half. Some visions were not supposed to happen too early. And things were explained too fast. But I understand. I understand stuff like that. It's, it's, it is a long movie. But the book is really long. And it's a lot of details. So they're, they, they're just stuff that has to be done. I understand that. But there is one big thing that he did change in the second one. Chani in the book is 100% loyal infatuated and in love with Paul so spoilers here for everybody you might as well turn away you haven't seen it but Paul Atreides this is Game of Thrones in space Paul Atreides after killing fucking uh, Freyd Rutha 
uh, Austin Butler. He tells the emperor, this is the way we're going to solve this solution without me killing you and shit. No more blood shit. I'm going to marry your fucking daughter and shit. And I'm going to be the next king. And we'll unite. And that's it. No more fighting. And and then fucking uh, he agrees to it, of course, the emperor, which is a uh, uh, Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken. Walken. Uh, he agrees to it. And so he marries Florence Pugh. But in the book, Chani, he explains to Chani, which is in Dea, he explains to her in the book, hey, I'm marrying her, but for political reasons. You're my main bitch. You're the only one I'm going to fuck. Well, no, I'm going to have to fuck her because, you know, uh, lineages and shit in the half. But you're the one I love. And she says, I understand. And I'm in love with you as long as I have your love. It's okay. You can, I can be your side, bitch. But I know you love me. That's in the book. In this one, in the movie, Chani, she doesn't, she agrees and accepts it, but she's bitter about it and leaves him. And she's pregnant with his child, who is, who, who's going to be played by Anna Taylor Joy in the next movie. They already showed it in a vision. That's going to be badass. Um, so, yeah, Drew Messiah's happening. But they changed it where it's all like Chani's not devoted to him and not in like an agreement to him marrying uh, Florence Pugh. They changed that. Uh, it's not a big thing. Uh, at first, it did bother me and it took me away from it. Uh, but I want to see what he does with Dune Messiah because if, uh, this might implicate some things uh, in the storyline but we'll see we'll see Did I still say uh, these movies have been 100% no no 95% faithful to the damn book and that's as good as you can get to anybody who's adapting a novel to a fucking theatrical movie because no one's ever going to do it 100%. And the fact that they did it 95%, I think it's really, really a good testament. Not only that, but it, they, these two movies are visual masterpieces. Not only that, visuals, the sounds, the soundtrack, everything coming out from your screen is amazing. I cannot praise fucking, I think his name's Villanueva or Villanueva. Some shit like that. I cannot praise that director enough. Um, this guy's like the new Christopher Nolan. Is all I'm going to say. I can't wait to see what movie he does next. I know he's going to do Dune Messiah. He's going to do the third one. And after that, he doesn't want to do it anymore. He doesn't want to do Children of the Dune. But he's going to do the next one for sure. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, I, I hope this still makes more money. I hope it makes... Uh, more than the last one because the last one only hit 400 million this already made half of that so hopefully it makes more than 400 million anyways cheers to dune uh but be before we get into the main shit which is dc and marvel uh let's end this uh ass first piece of ass with the halo review episode six it means there's only two left. So this is actually probably to me the best episode out of the last out of the six episodes I've seen so far. This one's my the best one that balanced everything and satisfied me finally completely. It starts off with uh, the new Spartans in training. Only they're not Spartans. They're humans in training. And uh, it's badass. The first fucking it's badass. The mission they're on and everything that's happening to them is so fucking badass. And then you find out it's all in a simulation and they're being trained by the Marines, trained by the Marines in simulations and, and being put in scenarios to see how they react and shit. And uh, and Kai is in charge of them. And Eckerson is putting her in charge and telling her, make them into Spartans. 
And she says, but they're not Spartans. They're humans. Yes, they are humans. But you need to turn them into Spartans. Get them to think like Spartans. And throughout the whole episode, at least in this part, because there's just several things that happen, but because I'm going to jump into other shit right now. But throughout the whole episode, they keep going back to this. And this little girl, I think her name's Perez, that's from the other episodes, she fucking gets it. And the way a Spartan thinks is not like a human because they're not human. They were created for the sole purpose of war. So this little girl starts thinking in the fact that we need to stop formations. We need to stop this. Look, if there's a billion of them, then all of us need to push forward. And hopefully one of us can get through and finish the mission. Because Spartans don't care about them, their lives. They care about the mission. And this one little girl understood it throughout the episode. And that's kind of what this entails. Eckerson wants to train the humans to think like Spartans. You're not thinking about saving your life. How am I going to get out of this? You're thinking of like, we need to do this mission. If I die, I don't give a fuck. But I'm going to do my part to make sure this mission is completed. And that's how a Spartan thinks, like a robot. And that's what this training is for. That's badass. I love that in this episode. And that's sprinkled probably in parts throughout the episode. But I'm going to keep on going. The other stuff that's sprinkled throughout the episode is the Arbiter. The Arbiter is with McKee. And the Arbiter is now being fucking, uh, I guess challenged by the priests and stuff on his ship and they're telling him like why are we not following orders and we're following this human you're already disgraced do you know what's going to happen to you if you don't fucking uh listen to us and so the arbiter is forced to make a choice of whether he's gonna fucking listen to the priest or listen to mickey uh and and that's another stuff that's sprinkled on here and that's fucking badass because it's progressing the story with mickey and i like that we get to the climax of this episode where Master Chief breaks in to try to get to the artifact. Because it's the only way, I don't know, I guess he wants to connect to it and find McKee and find where Cortana is and ass. Uh, there's another story about that uh, sprinkled onto that. But the climax, he gets to Kai and Kai sees him. And Kai's all like, look, I'm following orders. You're defective. You're going down. And he's trying to tell her, like, fine, do, do it. Don't think. Just follow orders. That's what you were made for. Trying to convince her, like, you're just a tool. You're, you're not thinking for yourself. And you're, you're now the enemy. Uh, but she doesn't listen. And she beats the shit out of them. And then just leaves them there for dead. And sh to go confront Eckerson. To go ask him. And Eckerson confesses what I just told you. That, you know, because she tells him, this training for the humans. And what's it for? And he's telling him, we're... They're not going to live in their missions, and they need to know that the mission is the mission. If they're going to die, they're going to die, but the mission is what they're there for. They're not there to fucking be heroes, which is what Spartans are. They're fucking expendable. Uh, and so that's what basically Ty's little story arc is here, and it's badass. We also find out that Eckerson, this whole time, has also been following orders by this fucking Indian lady who's also been helping fucking Master Chief do what he's doing. And I'm just like, this is getting even deeper and more badass. And like I said, I really enjoyed This is the best episode I've seen. This is the best fucking episode. Um, but it's getting more badass because this happens. And then Cortana shows up. And then the, the, one of the best parts is Cortana shows up to help Master Chief and says, hey, I will help you fucking open the doors and get to the fucking artifact so you can feel it why are you doing this because I, I'm, I'm I think she, Cortana confesses I'm over there with the aliens and I'm on their ship and shit but I'm coming here to help you so that you can come find me badass so Master Chief gets up and starts going to get the artifact and Cortana's helping him but then Cortana is seen talking to this fucking Indian lady and you find out that she's the one who let Cortana get captured by the aliens so as they can get intel. And most likely, and I'm guessing, because they make it seem like that it could be it could be Cortana's thinking for herself. But most likely she's telling her to go talk to Master Chief and do what he's doing as well. 
But but it could also be Cortana's thinking for herself and trying to help Master Chief on the side without letting him know. It makes it seem like Cortana's playing all sides in order to get back to Master Chief. And then finally, tying, finally, after six fucking episodes, they finally tie in the first season. And Miranda Keys shows up. Halsey finds her, her mom, and she's studying some artifacts. And I noticed this right away. They're starting, they're studying artifacts that are going to mention the flood. They're going to start bringing in the flood into this. They kind of set the spores and the fungus in the first season for one episode, and then they never mentioned it again. This is another hint to it. The flood will come maybe season three, or they'll start finding out about it. But this is going to lead to it. Uh, what I have here in the end is just the hell that breaks out is they, they fucking tell the Arbiter, kill this human because we, we found this little device, which is Cortana. And Cortana went and visited Master Chief and we found a signal going back to the humans. So kill her because she's betraying us. And so the Arbiter says, he takes out his, his fucking weapon and he says, whoever is with me is with me and who is not is my enemy. And then he starts up killing the priests. And half of the people are helping him, but the other half are fighting him. And all hell is breaking loose. So McKee goes to the artifact to touch it at the same time as Master Chief is about to touch the artifact over here on their side. And so, obviously, for the next episode, when they both touch it, they'll both be transported to the vision of the Halo Ring. And hopefully they'll both get the coordinates and location to the Halo Ring so that both the Covenant and the USSR or whatever they're called, the United States Confederate, whatever the humans can reach the Halo along with the aliens and hopefully the last episode because it's there's two episodes left the, the last episode, we can finally see them both reach the Halo ring and end there for season three. See, like, they're slowly, like, finally. This is the best episode because finally you're touching on plot points from the first season. You're finally talking about the Halo ring. You're talking about the flood. You're finally, this is Halo. Like, the, the first five episodes completely went and deviated from the first season and had me lost and confused. And then slowly you were bringing it back. I don't even understand why you waited six episodes to show me Miranda Keys. She was a main character in the first season. This little black girl. <sighs> season one is way better. Season one out of 10 episodes, I say eight are perfect, you're great. They're, they're, it's, it's not perfect. I mean, you know, it's not Halo exactly. And then there's shit added on. The McKee story is different. It's not supposed to be there. But I accepted it. This season, this is the first episode that 100% I'm on board. This is the first episode, 100% I'm on board. Um... Hopefully the next two episodes will knock it out the park and will at least leave me satisfied to continue on to wanting a third season. Uh, but I haven't really been too, too that happy from this fucking second season. I'll just put it like that. Uh, but that's it for Halo. Cheers to that. All right. We're well, moving on to some more ass. And uh, James Gunn got on his meta threads. Apparently, there's a thing called threads now. I just learned last week. And he posted a bunch of images of some of the inspiration that he uh, fucking got into making this brand new Superman movie from comic books. Posted a bunch of pictures, a little woke girl, a goth girl committing suicide, Superman stopping him. Uh, hang on, let me slow it down. I, I'm fucking up left and right. Uh, but yeah, a little goth girl 
but Superman crying with a dog in a museum by himself. Uh, another Superman with Lois Lane going to the sky, taking their clothes off and shit. Superman talking with his dad on the in you know in a fucking field with the sun down and shit. Young Superman kid, you know, in the with a shirt, fucking next to the Daily Planet. And then what some some of the pictures that worry me are some some shit like this. We put like Superman from the 1940s with, with like Supergirl, Jimmy Olsen. A flying dog, a flying cat, and a flying horse. That bizarro little guy in the cloud. Bizarro down there. I don't know. That kind of shit worries me, but I get what he's trying to do. He's trying to keep it all classy and fucking 19. Like, oh, these characters do exist in the world of today. Is what what he's trying to say. Which is why we're also going to see a dog in the movie, which worries me. Uh, But yeah, kind of inspiration he's drawing from. He put the kingdom come, Superman. Mm. The 1950s old Superman. Uh, the You know what? The Superman there from the 90s cartoon. Or was it 2000s? It might have been late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, where he's going like that. That version of Superman I really enjoyed. Uh, in fact, it was even that cartoon was woke before the woke movement because that cartoon was the first one to have the brown because he wasn't black. I always thought he was like he could have been like, you know, have Mexican or Puerto Rican, uh, but he had the brown Lex Luthor. That cartoon was the first one to have it, uh, and I liked it. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, so it's just to him, you know, posting some of the inspirations that he grabbed from comic books for Superman and overall what what I'm getting from this is uh, he's trying to go for more of a traditional Superman you know with values more more maybe like a guy who who people might not actually like and be like this guy's too nice like you know what I'm saying like a real Boy Scout, like really, like, because, you know, a lot of the stuff he's showing is showing Superman in a kind of, like, really noble, you know. Zack Snyder took Superman into some crazy fucking shit, but Zack Snyder is fucking Zack Snyder, so you know what I'm saying. Um, and besides that, the only other thing we've seen is uh, Christopher Reeve's Superman, which was really, really fucking, you know. For the time that it was, it was what it was. I don't know, man. James Gunn is one of these guys that worries me because he's done good stuff with, 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 like, you know, I, I'm not going to say every Guardians of the Galaxy movie is amazing. I'd say the first one and the third one are good. I don't know about the middle one sucks. Uh, the middle one sucks ass. Um, he's done good with that kind of stuff. Then you've seen him in something like, I think there was a movie called Super with uh, Ryan Johnson, Dwight, and Ellen Page. Elliot Page, I'm sorry. Back when he was a little girl, a very attractive little girl back then, by the way. Beautiful, beautiful, attractive little girl. Um, They made a movie called Super with James Gunn. And that one's really hardcore, bro. Um... And then you have him do something like Slither, or and then he does something like uh, Bright Bird. And so there's like James Gunn's one of those guys where he's all over the place, man. And you're giving him something like Superman, something that's like been around for almost a hundred years. This shit's about to go into public use. You know, the copyright's about to be free to everybody pretty soon. Um. It's one of those things where you kind of are just hoping he really doesn't shit the bed on this. Because you don't, you don't know what he's going to do. And he's showing you a bunch of random pictures saying, I drew inspiration from these comic books. This is really randomness. 
These are really all diff really different versions of Superman. So the only thing he's actually shown us is the cast, which we already know the actors. And he showed us the S that he showed last week on the snow, which is the Kingdom Come S. So at least the logo we know is going to look like the Kingdom Come. Uh, the one here on the, on the far left. He's like that. That's the way the S is going to look, but it does look like the one in the middle with yellow on it and it has a yellow border on the outside we've already seen that well um was it my time to shine came out and said this is what he's gonna look like the idiot showed a, a picture of a fortnite skin but it's it, look i'm not gonna show the fortnite skin i don't know if we're gonna get copywritten for that i don't know some shit going on so i don't want to post it but i said it last week when james gunn made fun of david cornswit and said hey you're lucky i didn't post you in your underwear playing in the snow it's not because he was in his underwear because the superman s was covered in snow it's because he was in the snow in 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 the superman suit and the superman suit has underwear because that's the joke is like oh you're in your superman's your 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 tiny whities the suit and somebody already drew it somebody drew it and said this is most likely what the suit is going to look like and i'm telling you this is probably what it is it's going to have trunks like if like if it's underwear that's why james gunn told david cornswit when he took the picture of the ass covered in snow he told david cornswit you're lucky I didn't post a picture of you doing snow angels in your underwear. Because Superman is going to have trunks like tidy whities but they're red. Like underwear. He's going to do that for Superman's. And this person drew it light blue and then real blue. We already know from the picture that James Gunn show it's a dark blue. So it doesn't look like this light blue one. It looks more like the other one. That's probably 95% accurate. What that's going to, what our new Superman will look like. What do you all think? Uh, I, I like it. Because Zack Snyder's it was missing the yellow. I feel like it was missing the yellow a lot. And red, it was missing red a lot too. This one's just the perfect combination. This is more Superman than any. It's, I mean, you know, the S is a little hard to get used to because even the bottom part doesn't look like a total S. So that bothers me a little bit. Uh, but you know what? I'm happy about this. Uh, and I think this is probably very, very accurate as far as this is probably what it is going to look like, you all. Yeah. Cheers to this. If this is what James Gunn uh, is doing. I'm happy with the look. I'll just put it like that. This isn't official. This is a fan rendition. But from the descriptions and from the clues James Gunn has laid out, like I told you, I'm pretty sure that's what it's going to look like. The dark blue one right there in the middle. All right. I'm done with the DC. Let's move on to the Marvel ass of the show. And we're start off with some spoilers. Get ready for this. Whenever Disney and Marvel decide to premiere the animated R-rated, mature-rated Marvel Zombies animation show, supposedly, whenever they decide to, to, to even announce it, the spoilers are now coming out that in that post-apocalyptic world where people have been turned into zombies, 
including Moon Knight. Mark Spector or whatever the fuck his name is. He's got three identities and shit. I don't remember the other two. Apparently, Khonshu will need a new host slash avatar and the new fist of Khonshu, meaning the new Moon Knight, will be none other than Blade for that show. We already know from the picture that Shang, because there's only, because remember, this is a post-apocalyptic world where everybody's zombies and there's only a few heroes left. I think Kamala Khan from the from the from the pictures we've seen in the past, Kamala Khan is one of them. Shang Cha is one of them. Now it's going to be Blade slash Moon Knight is going to be one of them. And I wonder if it's going to be Mahershala Ali Blade. That's my real question. <laughs> Even though it's just animation, it has nothing to do with the MCU. But it does because they're still using the actors in the same fucking look of the characters so I don't know I'm just saying at the end of the day this is ass alright we're moving on to more ass because the X-Men 97 episode uh, names and counts and also the dates were released and they were sent to these assholes that subscribe and lick Disney's ass and shit I've been trying to fucking get them to do this for me, but I don't know whose ass I got, whose balls I got to suck on to get this shit sent to my fucking doorstep. So I could be the one that says, I just got this from Disney. But these assholes got this shit. And it gives them all the episodes and the dates it's going to premiere. And we're going to get a two episode premiere on March 20th, guys. And it's going to be called To Me, My X-Men is the first episode, which is one of Charles Xavier's famous lines. And the second line, the second episode is going to be called Mutant Liberation Begins. Slash, let the wokeness commence. Aw, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. March 27th, we're going to have Fire Made Flesh. That sounds really sexual. April the 3rd, two days after April Fool's, we're going to have Motendo. Slash Life Death Part 1. What? Two episodes in one? And one of the episodes will be a continuation? That's insane. Alright, it gets better, y'all. April the 10th. Which is weird. Because you would think right after Life Death Part 1, you would have Life Death Part 2, the continuation to that half an episode because the other half of the episode is Montendo remember Montendo so the other half life death of the episode should continue next week but no the following week is an episode called remember it completely different forget about the continuation to be continued last episode here's another shit alright and then April 17th is the continuation to the half episode on April 3rd. You know, because it was Montendo slash Life and Death, so there's two episodes in one. But on April 17th, two weeks from that, we finally get the continuation to the half episode. But this will be one whole episode for the ending. Life, Death, Part 2. April 17th. Oh, yeah. I like this shit already. April 24th is Bright Eyes. Who knows what that means? And then we get to the wokeness. May the 1st. Tolerance is extinction. Yeah. If you don't vote Democrat, you're a Trump supporter and you're a racist. Part 1. May the 1st. May the 8th. Tolerance is extinction. Part two. If you believe in Christ, you're a racist and a Nazi. May the 8th. Holy shit. And then May the 15th. Tolerance is extinction. Part three. If you don't vote Joe Biden, you're going to hell. You're going to jail. 
We're going to shoot you. And shit. Part three, May the 15th. This is getting crazy, y'all. The X-Men. Season. Or, or continuation of 97. What do you all think of the episode count? This is getting serious. I'm going to review every episode. I can already tell you. I hate it all. I hate each and every one of these. But. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And I am going to wait till I watch them. And I will review each and every single one of them for you. That week. So, uh, cheers to X Men '97 and uh, the downfall of my childhood. I'd say pour it down to my homies, but I don't like wasting beer, so I'm just gonna pour it down my throat for my dead homies. Can we get some toast? Has gone online. And I said, I got some fucking leaks for you. And it's uh, some Deadpool fucking Wolverine leaks. And there will be many Deadpool variants, like the disgusting little dog. Like the fucking Deadpool that's like not burnt with cancer. And Lady Deadpool. And a fucking a bunch of other fucking dumbass Deadpools. But there's going to be a Deadpool that's going to be called Wolverine. And he's going to be a, a Deadpool Wolverine version. Basically a Deadpool with fucking adamantine claws. And a mask that is, kind of resembles Deadpool. Kind of resembles fucking Wolverine. And can we get some toast? It took the time to draw exactly what it will look like in the fucking movie. And I got to say... They're not a bad artist. That's a pretty good drawing. I mean, like, fucking, yeah. If, you know, they might have just traced this from a picture. They have an image that they don't want to show because they could get in trouble for, for posting an actual picture from the movie or something. So they might have just traced it over it. Uh, but this looks really good. And it, you know what? That's probably is how, you know what I don't, what I don't like are the eyes. But I got a feeling this person does not know how to draw. And this person literally put a sheet of paper and traced it. And that's how the eyes look. 100%. And that's what I don't like. But it doesn't matter. Because uh, one of the rumors is, is at the end of Deadpool 3, we're going to see like an endgame shit. Or, you know, like an endgame you saw all of the, the everybody who got brought back to life and all the Avengers fighting all of Thanos' forces, ah, like that. We're going to get that, but it's going to be Deadpool, a bunch of his variant, a lot of his variants, and the old X Men versus fucking, I don't know, uh, bald Professor Xavier's fucking. Uh, Female Professor Xavier with all her fucking cronies or bad guys or whatever. And there's going to be a big battle like that. And uh, yeah, that's supposedly. And they said that they just wait to it because a lot of people showed up to film that movie. They're just going to say like, you have no idea the cameos, the cameos we're going to see in this. They said, we were surprised at how many people showed up to film this movie. Y'all are not ready for this, they're saying. So we'll see. Uh, this is getting, the hype is getting up there, man. This is going to be Marvel's, billi finally, Marvel's billion dollar movie since Spider-Man, which they had to share the profits with Sony. So I know they're eager to fucking actually have a billion dollar movie. And this might finally be it. Okay. It will. It will. Not it, not it might. It will. The, the another the one of the final spoilers we have for Marvel. We're not done talking about this shit, but one of the final fucking spoilers we have for Marvel, coming from 
uh, I don't know, one of these bitches. Can we get some toast or my time to shine? One of these motherfuckers, you pay $3 a month to give me, give me spoilers. They have of the first promo image, probably from a t-shirt or a cardboard cutout or something. But they have, we have the first actual image of what Tim Blake Nelson's will look like in the movie when he's finally the leader. In Captain America Brave New World. Now we I'm showing you also pictures from when we saw him filming the movie a year ago before COVID, before they stopped production and then restarted again. His hands were green. He was headed towards the makeup department. So obviously he's gonna be that shade of color green, which is badass. He should be green. But now we finally see that he is gonna have a big head, not a really big head. But he is going to have a bigger head. And he's going to have a fucking beard. Uh, which is kind of cool. Oh, uh, look. This guy's a good actor, period. Tim Blake Nelson's a good actor. He is. Um, I loved him in uh, Old Brother Where Out Thou. He's fucking, that's a fucking crazy movie. Um, I don't think this will be a good movie because this movie was already filmed and Kevin Feige has gone back and reshot it and changed the ending. This movie was going to have this serpent society in it and the entire serpent society has been cut out and new stuff is being filmed as we speak to fill in the gaps of what they cut out. And that is Kevin Feige's decision. After he came back from vacation or whatever the fuck he was doing that Marvel fucked up the last three and a half years. He went on vacation and now he's trying to fix things, but he's making it worse by trying to fix things. Alright? That's all I'm saying. Uh, so Kevin Feige's coming in and chopped off the Serpent Society. This is a movie that's involving Theodore Thunderbolt Ross... Not only becoming president of the United States of America, but becoming the Red Hulk. Meaning the leader has some kind of Hulk DNA or serum in order to give it to Ross to turn into the fucking th Red Hulk. Alright, so that's part of it. The Hulk is not in this. Mark Ruffalo is not in this. And She-Hulk is not in this. The three main components to your story are not in this. On top of that, originally, the story was supposed to be about them going to Tiamat, the celestial that came out of the ocean, and the government wanting to get vibrating, right? Because it's like adamantium from it, because the skeleton's made out of adamantium. But Kevin Feige has come in and completely changed everything. So no one right now knows what this movie is about. Except for the fact that it's Captain America versus the leader. Which is primarily a Hulk villain. And the Red Hulk. Which is also a Hulk villain. Yet, this movie does not have Mark Ruffalo, the Hulk, in it. And does not have... Uh, that little girl, She-Hulk in it, either. So, yeah. This movie's gonna be ass. Kevin Feige needs to be fired. I don't know what's going on. No one knows what's going on. Kevin Feige doesn't know what's going on. And Tim Blake, Blake N Nelson, even though he's gonna kill it and knock it out of the park with whatever he, they give him, he probably doesn't know what's going on either. And it's going to suck ass because of that. I'm done with the Marvel shit. At least the leader looks pretty good. I'm sure the story is going to suck ass. Cheers. Let's finish it off with the final rumor. And it's none other than a goddamn Sony rumor. Because we already know that the three Peters... Peter 1, Peter 2, and Peter 3. Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield, and Tobey Maguire made 
both studios a billion over a billion dollars not only in ticket sales but in merchandise sales and in DVD sales and in streaming sales and in everything this movies made them a lot of money and Sony is determined to get more money because all the hundreds of millions of dollars they've wasted on Venom and Madam Web and Morbius and Craven the Hunter and all their shitty ass Stonyverse movies they have fucking flushed down the toilet and made no profit from. They are desperate to make more money like they did with the Tom Holland movie, No Way Home. So they are desperately fucking trying to fuck Marvel over and saying we don't want Spider-Man 4 to be about fucking kingpin it needs to be multiverse and we need all three peters and we need multiverse more peters and spider-mans and miles morales and all the kinds of shit that people like and make us money well it looks like they might actually get their way because actor thomas hayden church in a recent interview came out and said well they asked him more likely most uh, better say I'm drunk and high they asked this son of a bitch hey are you gonna come back in the Marvel movies in the MCU the multiverse to be the Sandman in the secret wars and he said no I think Toby when Toby Maguire and Sam Raimi I, 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 when they do Spider-Man 4 and I, I think they're going to do it. I'll come back for that one. Now here's a guy who hasn't been offered a role. But has probably heard chatter. Because he's there. About like Sam Raimi and Tobey Maguire are going to do Spider-Man 4. And if Sony is smart because they're desperate for money this is an easy fix you continue Spider-Man 4 with Tobey Maguire he's old now he's married to Mary Jane and they have children because he's old now but you want to make a billion dollars so you make Spider-Man 4 Toby Maguire's movie into a Spider-Verse movie. Maybe you don't have to bring Tom Holland. Maybe you don't. But you can very easily bring in Andrew Garfield to help him out in an adventure. And boom! One billion dollars! Aw, yeah! That's all I'm saying, motherfuckers. This is an easy fix, easy billion, easy money. You know how to do it right, you fucking idiots. This is easy money. Really easy money, Sony. You idiots. Just make Spider-Man 4 with Tobey Maguire featuring Andrew Garfield because... Spider-Verse, baby. I need your help. Oh, li little Peter Parker from the MCU is busy in another adventure. That's okay. Let me call my other brother. Oh, Andrew Garfield to help me on my adventure. That's all you fucking need, bro. That's all you need to make you money. Because that's all we want. <laughs> we just want our childhood back when it was good. That's all we want. Sony, mm. Marvel, you're fucking up. Oh my God, chairs. Who knows what's gonna happen with this shit? Cheers to that. But I am done ranting for tonight, y'all. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here tonight uh, in this new dud channel. We didn't have anybody watching us, but I appreciate you guys who were here and shit. Uh, I want to say uh, I'll leave you with some life advice. Um, sometimes you want to control life, be in charge, and, and, and kind of 
be the master of your destiny and say, you know, like, I'm going to make this happen or this is going to happen because I'm trying and shit. But sometimes, sometimes it's best to, like, not be the guy driving. And just sit down as a passenger and enjoy the ride. Regardless, as if it's it's a it's a it's a bumpy road, and there ain't nothing good happening right now, but you just got to fucking enjoy it and go through it, man. Be an observer. And, and from the just go through it. You don't always have to be acting, acting, you know. Making actions. Sometimes you can just. Yeah, fuck. And it might be easier. If you just go with the flow of things. Because at the at the end of the day, like the universe is so complex and we're so small, and everything's like a big clock. Everything in space is spinning in circles. The planets going around the fucking uh, the sun and the, the moons going around the earth and then other planets going around other orbits and Milky Ways and entire star systems, everything's in sync, going in circles and shit. So there's no use in trying to fight and go upstream and shit. Because you tend to just make things harder. Just go with the flow. Go down the river and enjoy the ride. Even if all of a sudden it gets a little bumpy, eventually the river will calm down, bro. And it'll be good. That's all I'm saying. Cheers, y'all. I'm going to catch you next week. Whoa, back. Oh, 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 oh